In this new bull market, Bitcoin spot volumes are higher than ever thanks to these ETFs. And if you're not sure which ETF is right for you, I've got an analysis up in the cards and down in the description. But even in this new age of ETFs, lots of people are still buying Bitcoin on mobile. And unfortunately, 99% of the people who are buying Bitcoin on mobile are getting ripped off. There are two big categories of Bitcoin mobile apps. The first category is exchanges like Coinbase, Binance, and Kraken. And the problem with this category is that the fees suck. By default, these apps are usually interacting with a broker that charges 1% to 10% fees to buy Bitcoin which is way too high. And the second category is neobanks like Strike, Cash App, and Robinhood. And the problem with this second category is that the fees also suck. Some of these kinds of apps will tell you things like we charge zero fees, which is never true. In reality, they're charging you a spread that changes over time. And while spreads aren't technically fees, they do affect how much Bitcoin you get for how much US dollars you spend, and so they matter. And so to get the lowest fees, we need to bypass the broker in that first category of exchanges. By bypassing the broker, we're going directly to the exchange and we're getting the cheapest fees that we could possibly be getting buying Bitcoin. Because again, remember the closer that you get to actually interacting with an exchange, you know, the global network of everyone that's trying to buy and sell Bitcoin, the closer you get to that action, the lower your fees are going to be. And when you have something like a broker or a neobank sitting between you and exchanging actual Bitcoin, you're always going to be paying that extra step, that extra bit of fees to that middleman that's part of that process. And the only mobile app that I'm aware of today that allows you to get as close to the exchange as possible is Coinbase Advanced Trade. To get access to Coinbase Advanced Trade, all we need to do is open the default Coinbase mobile app. Next, all we have to do is click on these nine dots in the top left-hand corner of our screens, and it'll open up this side panel, and we'll see Coinbase Advanced for professional traders. And we'll go ahead and click this. We'll scroll down and we'll see that we're paying low volume based fees with zero monthly fees and no minimum portfolio sizes. And then we'll go ahead and continue to Coinbase Advanced Trade. Now it's reloaded our Coinbase app as Coinbase Advanced Trade. And we can note up here that we can switch between Coinbase and Coinbase Advanced Trade using this menu at any time. To illustrate the difference between Coinbase and Coinbase Advanced Trade, let's go ahead and try to buy $10 of Bitcoin using the regular Coinbase app. So I'm going to go ahead and click on buy and sell, I'll click on buy, I'll click on Bitcoin, I'll click on $10, and then I'll review my order. We'll see here that I'm receiving about 13,500 Satoshis. And if I click down on my $10, we'll see that I'm getting charged a $1 Coinbase fee and that there is a 1.5% price spread in my order. And if I click here on learn more, I can come here to Coinbase's documentation and learn more about the Coinbase fee and the spread. And if I read through all of this, and then I come to Coinbase advanced, I can see that there is no spread for the Coinbase advanced trade because I'm interacting directly with the order book. I'm not interacting with one of those brokers that we talked about earlier on. Let's go ahead and close this and go back to Coinbase. And we're going to cancel this order because I don't want to get screwed by fees. So next we'll click back up on these nine dots and switch back over to Coinbase advanced trade. I think once you get used to the UI here on Coinbase Advanced Trade, you're going to find that it's really easy. So to do the exact same order that I just tried to do, I'm just going to click on BTC USD. I'm going to click on buy. I'm going to do a limit order because I want the lowest fees possible. And then I'm going to click on bid because I want my order to fill as quickly as possible. Next, I can either specify an amount of Bitcoin that I want to buy, or I can come down here to USDC and I can buy $10 of USDC. I personally use USDC because I like the fact that I can earn interest in my Coinbase account when I'm not trading with these dollars. If you don't understand what that means, go ahead and leave a comment down below and I'll make a video on it in the future. Next, you can just go ahead and click on preview buy order and then just place your buy order. And now when you click on done, you can go back up here and down to orders to see all of your open orders. So I just saw my limit buy for BTC USDC that I just placed and it was already filled. And so now I have this $10 of Bitcoin. And if we open up the details of this order, we can see at the bottom here that the fees that I paid were only 10 cents. And I didn't pay that one and a half percent price spread because I was interacting directly with the exchange. And we'll see in the executed section up here that I received 15,092 Satoshis, which is way more than the amount that I was getting quoted over on Coinbase for the same 10 US dollars. Some of you that have been paying more attention to the cryptocurrency space over time might be saying at this point in the video, that's all great, Rhett, but that 0.6% fee that you paid over on Coinbase is still pretty high relative to Binance's 0.1% fee. And while that's true, we also have to consider the withdrawal fees that we're paying. In 2024, exchanges need to use variable withdrawal fees or high static withdrawal fees so that they don't lose money. If the whole network is making lots of Bitcoin transactions, the price of sending Bitcoin goes up and it will cost an exchange more to send you your 
your Bitcoin. And when those fees spike for them, they pass the costs along to you and me. In the past, exchanges didn't have to do this because the cost of making a Bitcoin transaction was so consistently low that the exchanges would just eat the cost. But any exchange offering free withdrawals in 2024 is just losing money. It's not a sustainable long-term strategy. The only way that some exchange would be able to afford to do this in the long run is by eating that cost and then having you, the customer, pay that cost somewhere else within the business. To get around these high fees, you can check out mempool.space. I've done a couple of videos on mempool.space that I'll have linked up in the cards and down in the description. When you use that website, it makes it really easy for you to understand when it's the best time to make a withdrawal. On top of that variable Bitcoin withdrawal fee, some exchanges like Binance charge an extra fee on top of that variable on-chain withdrawal fee. So while some of these exchanges like Binance have really low trading fees, it's super expensive to get your Bitcoin off the platform, which is the entire point of having Bitcoin. So when you're using Coinbase Advanced Trade versus something like Binance, you are paying a little bit more per trade over on Coinbase Advanced Trade, but you'll make that money up on the back end when you go to withdraw your coins to self-custody. If you're looking for the best self-custody wallet for you here in 2024, check out this video right over here. And DM me on Twitter or join the Discord if you have any questions. I do still respond to all the comments. That's it for today. I love you all. See you next week. Bye.